morning, everyone. Good evening, rather. Excuse me. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Wilfredo Florentino. I am the chairman of the Transportation Committee for Community Board 5. Um, I'd like to welcome you all to our monthly meeting. Uh, tonight, we will have a presentation from the Department of Transportation um, on the Atlantic Avenue Phase 2 Green Streets. Uh, I will remind everyone uh, that once you come up to the microphone, please introduce yourself, uh, give us your name. Um, after the presentation, we will be uh, uh, requesting questions from uh, those of you that are here. I will remind you again to give us your name, as well as uh, keeping your questions to no more than uh, two minutes in length. Um, and with that, uh, I will uh, pass the mic over to the Department of Transportation. Does this, does this work? Yes. Okay. It's just for the work. Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Nathan Albert. I uh, work for the New York City Department of Transportation. Um, I am the liaison from our Brooklyn Borough Commissioner's Office to this community board. Um, Atlantic Avenue uh, is one of four great streets that was identified by the de Blasio administration and DOT um, for major capital reconstruction and pedestrian safety uh, improvements. Um, the others are 4th Avenue, Grand Concourse, and Queens Boulevard. And so some of you may remember that uh, we came to the board uh, actually in late December of 2015 uh, to talk about Atlantic Avenue phase one, um, which runs from Georgia Avenue where the bridge comes down uh, to Logan Street. Uh, the construction for that project is actually set to begin relatively soon. Um, we don't have an exact date yet, but when we do have one, we will notify the board um, and do the appropriate outreach there. But for now, we have the second phase of Atlantic Avenue, which runs from Logan Street to Rockaway Boulevard in Queens, actually. So it's from Logan Street to the Queens border in terms of Community Board 5. Um, and we have uh, major pedestrian safety, bicycle safety, driver safety improvements for this corridor. Um, we're not asking for a vote today, so, so this is uh, informational, but we will be uh, looking forward to your questions, your comments, and with that, I'll pass it to Lily. Um, Lily and Olivia have both been working on this project very much, and I uh, hope you're excited to hear what they have to say. Thank you. Um, so as Nathan mentioned, we're here to talk about Atlantic Avenue Phase 2. My name is Lily Gordon Coben, and I'm a project manager in the Research Implementation and Safety Group at DOT. Uh, so just to visualize some of the project limits that Nathan was just talking about, you can see on the left of the map, phase one from Georgia Avenue to Logan Street, uh, 1.2 miles um, wholly in Community Board 5. The design of that project is completed, and as Nathan mentioned, construction is scheduled to begin soon. And then phase two from Logan Street to Rockaway Boulevard, on the Queens side um, in Brooklyn CB5 and in Queens CB9. Uh, design is currently underway and we're in the outreach process and construction is tentatively scheduled to begin in 2019. So a project timeline to give you a sense of where we've been and, and where we are. Uh, in November of 2015, um, following the announcement of the Great Streets Capital projects, we uh, could began conducting outreach. We held a safety workshop for both phases one and two of this project. Uh, we, as Nathan mentioned, came to, to CB5 to present the first phase of the project. Um, and then since then, we've been conducting outreach and working on the design for phase two. Um, this, fall, this past fall and summer, we held uh, briefings with stakeholders and elected officials. In January, we presented this project to Queen CB9, and now we are here presenting to you. Um, and then, as I mentioned, construction of this phase is scheduled to begin in 2019. So a little bit about why we're here, why we're doing this project. 
Um, this is a Vision Zero priority corridor. For those of you who might not know, Vision Zero is the city's initiative to reduce traffic fatalities in the city. Um, in 2015, we released uh, borough action plans for for each city. Is that better? For each city, or for excuse me, for each borough. Uh, identifying priority corridors, intersections, and areas. So those are places where pedestrians were getting killed or severely injured at, rate, at higher rates than in the rest of the borough. Um, and Atlantic Avenue was identified as a priority corridor in both Brooklyn and Queens. So in Brooklyn, um, uh, 8.5 pedestrians were killed or severely injured per mile on Atlantic Avenue was also identified as a great street. So one of four citywide streets, arterial streets, that the mayor identified we needed extra uh, investment, capital investment in, to really make uh, dramatic, drastic changes to improve pedestrian and sa safety for all use and, and safety for all users of the roadway. Um, and then in, in 2017, uh, we released a report called Safer Cycling, looking at trends in cyclist safety across the city and from that report we identified community boards community districts with um, high rates of cyclists killed or severely injured but relatively few numbers of bicycle facilities and that report found that brooklyn community board five was a priority bicycle district so those are areas of the city where we have um, committed to developing the bicycle network and uh, improving safety for cyclists as well. So when we look at the crash patterns, um, the safety on Atlantic Avenue, um, as I mentioned before, Atlantic Avenue is a Vision Zero priority corridor. It's in a priority area and it's a great street, but what does that mean in terms of the intersections and who's getting hurt and where are they getting hurt? So this map is showing um, a number of bubbles at each intersection on, the, on this corridor in phase two. The yellow bubbles are total injuries, the orange bubbles are severe injuries and fatalities, and the red bubbles are fatalities. So you can see that there are a number of intersections that stand out, Logan Street, Crescent, Rockway Boulevard, those all have high numbers of injuries. But across the corridor, there are pretty consistent orange and red bubbles. So that means that um, there are severe injuries and fatalities happening at almost all of the in intersections along the corridor. So we really want to pay attention to the corridor as a whole, not just to each intersection. Um, in total, there have been 673 injuries on the corridor in the last five years of available data. And 38 people killed or severely injured, including 14 pedestrians. And from 2010 to the present, there have been five fatalities on this corridor, which is about one mile long. So the existing roadway conditions, I'm sure many of you, if not all of you, are familiar with the street. Uh, it's about 90 feet wide. It's a very wide roadway to cross for a pedestrian, particularly if you're older or if you're a student, if you're times by the wide street, especially if there isn't a lot of traffic, like in the off-peak overnight hours. We also see uh, aggressive turns or sort of um, people trying to make the most out of the limited time they have maybe to make a turn so in the upper right hand corner you can see this um, it's a little bit hard to see but there's a person walking in that yellow circle and she's trying to figure out how to navigate between this bus and the vehicle that's trying to turn so kind of a tricky situation and, and nobody's really getting the best out of the street there uh, we also see a lot of mid-block crossing um, a lot of jaywalking, which um, really indicates to us that we're not, we haven't created a street that works for all the users of the roadway. So pedestrians aren't being able to cross in places where, um, from one place that they want to get from to a place they want to go. Um, so we want to uh, create more places where people can safely cross the street and make that desirable for, and clear for pedestrians. And then we also see a lot of parking on the median, uh, which is dangerous not only for um, the people driving um, and getting in and out of those cars, because then they become people crossing mid-block, but it's also dangerous for other drivers on the street because it creates a lot of unpredictable behavior. 
Uh, so a little bit about our outreach. We, as I mentioned before, we conduct, we held a workshop and we have a team of street ambassadors who go out onto the street for people who maybe can't meet, make evening workshops or meetings. So they go out and talk to folks um, at subway stations and other kinds of community locations. We found that um, people really are interested in things like greenery and benches. They want Atlantic Avenue to, meet, to be a more pleasant, inviting uh, community uh, amenity. They also wanted safer crossings for pedestrians and better bike connections in Bro to Brooklyn and Queens neighborhoods. So as I mentioned, our street ambassador team, they distributed over 12,000 project information postcards to schools in the area. Um, visited 25 locations and collected surveys. From those surveys, we found that 85% of people felt unsafe when crossing Atlantic Avenue on foot, which wasn't really surprising to us given the existing conditions. We also saw that 75% uh, rated current walking conditions on Atlantic Avenue as in need of improvement, and 75% said that they would bike more if there were improved bike connections to regional destinations like some of the parks, um, and other existing bicycle facilities. So this is an aerial um, schematic image of our proposed design. So uh, we're looking at the street from above and our proposed design is to reconstruct the center median with planting. So this is a continuation of the phase one of the Great Streets project. So anybody who was at that community meeting back in 2015 where we presented phase one. This w should look familiar. Um, we'll be adding trees and other kinds of plantings to a, the ra a raised median in the center. We'll also be extending pedestrian refuge space into the crosswalks to create safer pedestrian crossings and slower left turns. And we'll be installing a raised median side bicycle lane which would be separate from traffic by a curb height to create safe bicycle connections. And then we'll be adding left turn bays and left turn signals to create safer left turns and reduce conflicts, like we saw in those photos before. A little bit about the bicycle network in this neighborhood. As you can see, based on the thick arrows is our project limits for phase two. Um, and then this map is showing the bicycle facilities in this neighborhood now. So there's really limited bicycle connections in Cypress Hills and Woodhaven, um, including to and from Highland Park. And Atlantic Avenue is a key east-west connection for drivers, but for bus riders, but also for cyclists. So we see it as a link to existing facilities in western Brooklyn and an opportunity to expand the bicycle network in this priority bicycle district, which we identified as in need of um, sort of improving safety for cyclists. And um, just an example from another project that's somewhat similar in that it's a median side bicycle lane uh, where we've installed uh, a bicycle lane against a median and then there's traffic and then there's a curb. Um, on Queens Boulevard, we have installed this, a similar design in, starting in 2015 and we've seen huge increases in the number of cyclists using the, the street. So 150% increase in cyclists from before the implementation of the project to the present. We've also seen a 63% decline in pedestrian injuries and 28% decline in total crashes. So this again, coming back to Atlantic, um, in phase two, um, the orange arrows on this map are showing the locations where we are proposing to add dedicated, le dedicated left turn bays and left turn signals to make it safer to make a left turn, really clarify how things um, work on the street. And there is one existing turn ban northbound at Crescent Street, and then we have one proposed turn ban um, at Elder Lane, which is a very low volume left turn. We're also proposing, um, or we're, under, we're studying two signalized pedestrian crossings at Lincoln Ave and Grant Ave to um, make it safer for pedestrians to cross the street. Um, these are also locations where we've seen some fatalities in recent years, so we're hoping to address some of those crash patterns. And then we wanted to talk a little bit about this intersection, multi-intersection uh, around Conduit Boulevard and Atlantic. Um, we know that this is an area of 
a lot of conversation. Um, there's going to be a new big development, Dismore Chestnut Development. Um, it's a connection between City Line Park, Transit Tech High School, and the J Train. Um, there's also a very long distance between signalized crossings here. So there's a signal at Logan Street, and then there's a signal at Euclid Ave, and it's over a thousand feet between the two. So it's quite a long ways between signals. There's also the on and off ramps for the conduit. Um, and then on the south side of Atlantic Avenue, there's no sidewalk or pedestrian crossing. So um, it can be a potentially very dangerous and unpleasant pedestrian environment. Our goal here is to improve pedestrian access both on Atlantic Avenue and across north-south Atlantic Avenue. However, there are a number of constraints in this area, um, including the change in grades. So from the north side of the street to the south side of the street, there's a kind of a big hill. Anybody who's driven or ridden the bus or walked around here will um, be familiar with that. That hill can make some of our construction processes a little bit more difficult. There's also a very heavy number of vehicles that get on and off of the conduit. Um, and then there are uh, some tricky sight lines where there are these curves that make it difficult for um, vehicles to see um, pedestrians at a certain distance. So right now we are working on investigating potential possible improvements here and developing a new capital project dedicated to this area. So to recap, um, you can see on the right here, this on the top is a current picture before the current condition, and then after is a rendering of what we expect and hope that this project will look like. So our, the proposed benefits, or the benefits of the proposal are to construct a new median with trees and greenery. Uh, we expect that this will reduce conflicts between motor vehicles, pedestrians, and cyclists, provide safer, shorter pedestrian crossings, creating safer, simpler left turns, installing this safe, uh, high-class bicycle connection in a priority bicycle district and creating a linear greenway on Atlantic Avenue. So that's our presentation and happy to take questions um, and to hear any comments. Thank you, Lily. Mm -hmm. uh, so first we'll hear from uh, any committee members, uh, Ms. Brayboy who uh, has joined us. There are also some committee members um, that are out in the audience, uh, Mr. Riggins, and uh, I believe there's somebody else in the back from the uh, full board. Um, and so if anyone from the board has any questions at this point, we'll allow them to go first with their questions. Ms. Brebway. The, the five fatalities, um, what four streets were those at? And what year? So there have been five fatalities between 2010 and actually um, August of 2017. Um, although that is, I believe that figure is accurate to present. Um, and they're all represented in the red dots here. So there's been, there's one at Crescent Street, one at Grant, two at Elder Lane, and one at um, Four Bell. And three of those were, um, I believe four of them actually were pedestrian fatalities and one was a motor vehicle occupant. Two of them were pedestrian? Four were pedestrian oh, four. and one was a motor vehicle occupant fatality. And I don't have the years off the top of my head, but that's something we can provide. Yes. Mm-hmm. So killed or severely injured KSI is a term that we use um, where we, we, we want to focus on fatalities, but we also want to focus on severe injuries, which can include life-altering um, injuries such as a loss of a limb or other extremely debilitating injuries. So um, we get all this data from uh, the police department and the state DMV. We, that goes through a database and then gets categorized based on um, the 
also a doctor's assessment and the hospital reports, yeah, all so those things. Yeah. You have 14 pedestrians killed and severely. Killed, so you have five killed. that actually expired, and you had nine that were severely injured. Four pedestrian, four fatalities, and nine severe injuries. Says five fatalities so, so there are uh, at the so That's what I'm the, yeah this the data can be a little bit confusing because we have much more current access to the fatality data than to um, all of the the total injuries and severe injuries which is a uh, much more well, 14 and five is a big difference so, so five fatalities in total for pedestrians we have 68 injuries 11 severe injuries and then we have four fatalities. On the top of that uh, chart there, it says three. The fourth one occurred in uh, the time period between that data and the bottom number. So Lily, I think it would be helpful for us, helpful, excuse me, for us to have uh, the details of what these terms mean. Sure, you know, what yeah, we can provide that. So it had something about the aggressive turn mm -hmm. is, and is with that street. Is this within um, Community Board 5? Yes. Street and what street is this? Um, that is... Crescent. Yes. Crescent and... Crescent and Atlantic. You, you deal with that at every intersection. Right? Mm -hmm. every intersection. Just because it's our Crescent, you deal with that at Logan, you deal with that at Elder. Mm -hmm. Building on the left or the right? Yeah. Why is Taisha? This building on the top and the bottom are the same intersection. Oh, okay. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, okay, so if we have no other questions, Mr. Wiggins, please. Um, and you said East New York is a designated um, priority mm -hmm. bike district? Yes. So about the whole East New York and the, the scope of the, what you're showing us today. So the, all of uh, Community District 5 was designated a priority bicycle district in a report that we published last summer, which is based on, uh, we looked at the total number of cyclists killed or severely injured, as well as the uh, percentage of streets in a district with bicycle facilities. And, um, districts that had high numbers of cyclists that have been killed or severely injured, but low numbers of, low, or low percentage of bicycle facilities, those were places that we identified as in need of additional bicycle facilities. Yes. So Atlantic Avenue mm -hmm. was an a, a area that was designated an area where there was a lot of bicycle accidents. It's not, necessary, not necessarily that it was on Atlantic Avenue, but in this community district as a whole. So why did they designate Atlantic Avenue? Why did they didn't put it in somewhere? Else within the boundaries of right. Community Board 5. Why would they put it right there and create more chances of bicycle fatalities? So you're asking why would we put why a bicycle put lane? It? Yeah, mm -hmm. because if it's not a problem now, Mm -hmm. Why put something in there that might be a problem later on? So because it's no mm -hmm. it's no accidents, bicycle accidents on there. You don't show that any mm -hmm. designation of that. So why create a, a lane over there? That's yeah. the problem is all these lanes created and it's the traveling and the traffic over there with it's going to create a big problem. Okay, so yeah. essentially, why was Atlantic chosen? Why was Atlantic chosen to add a bicycle lane? That's a yes. good question. So uh, this map is showing every, the streets that have a blue or a purple line are streets that have a bicycle facility. And so in this larger part of Meaning the- Meaning a bicycle lane. Yes, a bicycle lane or some other, um, yeah, any kind of bicycle lane. Um, so, it, Atlantic Avenue is a key east-west connection. It's an important east-west connection for people who 
drive, for people who want a bike, for people who take the bus. And um, in the, in, so one of the reasons that um, it was determined this would be a good street for a bicycle lane is because of that key connection. So if you, you know, if you're thinking about when you drive maybe through the neighborhood or when you're going on a bus through the neighborhood, um, you know, you're not going to do that a few blocks south maybe because there's the, in, the conduits running through. So then you have to kind of wiggle around and, and go through and it's not a straight shot. So it's a similar reason why someone would want to ride a bicycle. So it's a, it's a key connection and um, we have the capacity in this capital project to rebuild the median and expand it in order to, um, to add that space. And because the bicycle lane will be separated at a, a higher curb, and we'll be able to add the protected um, left turn signals. Um, we'll be creating it in a way that is very safe and has been proven to um, reduce uh, injuries and crashes for all the users of the street, not just for cyclists. No, I don't like that. I don't like that. Can I go ahead. Back with George, go ahead. Go ahead. So what, what about um, Liberty Avenue? Less traffic, you got two-way traffic going east to west. Why not a bike lane there? Because see, absolutely right, Atlantic Avenue, you could barely, traffic can barely flow through Atlantic Avenue right now. Mm -hmm. And you're getting ready, and also you're gonna put, you said, today you said you're gonna put curb height divided between the traffic and the bike lane? Yeah. The bike lane will be raised. So uh, if, if you were riding a bicycle, you would be um, raised at a higher height. You wouldn't be riding at the same level as um, a, a motor vehicle. So there would be a, a height curve mm -hmm. to separate the bike lane mm -hmm. from the traffic. Yes. And, and, and that'll be easier for people to cross the street on this. Well, well, uh, you know, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily convinced that the existing conditions on Atlantic were taken into consideration before the implementation of, of a bike lane. I mean, I'd like to hear more about the thought process on, on the uh, DOT's part. In terms of in more terms about of the, the bike lane specifically? Bike lane, um, take, and then take into consideration, obviously, the existing conditions mm -hmm. on Atlanta. So, so how you came to that realization? Sure. So, the median here is a really great opportunity to um, ex we have the existing meeting here, which presents us with a, a good opportunity to expand this space and um, be able to add the greenery, to um, possibly build new pedestrian crossings, as well as expand it at the intersections, which will help us to avoid some of these aggressive turns. Um, and then in expanding the median to accommodate for cyclists as well, we'll be addressing things like speeding. Um, we'll also be addressing crossing mid-block because the new median will be at a height which will discourage people from crossing mid-block because you won't be able to just easily cross back and forth. It'll be um, raised up so that you have to um, climb over it, essentially. So if I understand correctly, the bike lanes are, uh, are a tool in your toolbox. Yes. Um, in an effort to mitigate you know, the incident traffic incidents that are going on Yes, the bike lanes are both a, a, a tool that we use to mitigate traffic crashes, but they're also a way to expand the bicycle network, to provide for people who want to be bicycling, which was something we heard in our, in our outreach as well. Which outreach you talking about? Can go back to that slide. So we, so we conducted outreach at a number of schools. We held workshops. We distributed. We had a, an online website where people could leave comments. Oh. Um, oh. We had, have a team that does outreach in community locations. They went to the library. Um, so they didn't necessarily have to live in the district to create this, to add their input. Oh, they did. They went to schools in the district. No, they I'm went to online. You don't have to necessarily live in the air, air no but we do collect the zip code of the people who provide feedback so I we have a sense a of sure. sure i mean people sure. can but yeah. we we track that so we see okay if everybody who says that they want a bike lane here doesn't live in this area how do you then track it on a phone how do you do that 
well, we ask people to put in their zip code. That's what I'm saying. You can't so, I mean, can but we also, we also, when we go to a workshop and we, we go to schools, we have a sense of, of who's there. And so that helps us balance any, uh, any things like how, that. How did you, how do you put it together to say it's yeah. coming from this neighborhood? Yeah. Was there a verification process? No. We don't have a way to verify if people who give us feedback about their zip codes online are, are making it up. But in our experience, that has not been a problem when we've done it in other places because we see that there is a diversity of zip codes. And we also want to provide for people who want to bike through the neighborhood. Maybe those people are going to jobs on the other side of the neighborhood, and we want to make sure that they're able to safely do that. Yeah, and in the past, we've uh, communicated to DOT that <coughs> when you do make these sorts of presentations, that you, you know, clearly identify where these outreach sessions were held. So we need specific addresses, locations, and I'm sure that you could include that as part as part of your PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. And so that should be a note that, um, you know, you guys take back. Um, and we've mentioned we've a couple of times. A detailed list of every place you were. It says 25 locations, 40 surveys. That would be helpful. We can give you a detailed list of every single one. Right. That would be helpful. 25 locations and 40 surveys. Right. So, if I may, with respect to the chair. Uh, I, I recognize the uh, <laughs> the chairman of the board. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, DOT. I'm just coming in because of the magnitude of this project and mm -hmm. this is one of those very important committee hearings. And just listening to this piece, as we see as far as the summary, we, we often talked about the outreach um, issues mm -hmm. with the Department of Transportation and community and how we can better um, make it as the former, as, the, as my fellow car, uh, board members talk about more real, so to speak, because you know, there's still a lot of ways it can be manipulated um, because there's no way of verifi verifying. In this case, this is an example. Am I reading something that says just 40 surveys? Well, if I can have 12,000 cards were sent out to students I got that. in this neighborhood yes, sir. That, that directed people to the website. I got that. So that went to 12,000 homes in the district. I, hopefully, right? Well, mm -hmm. well, we will hope so. Did you, but did with you that get, said, did you get one? Because I know I didn't no, get one. No, no, that's in this I area. I believe you talk about the surrounding area, Nathan. Did, did you know exactly they they were, were in schools that were uh, in in a proximity to the project area. So I don't know okay. if it was all of CB five. No, um, because like uh, we, we were our our process with with the schools was that we we dropped them off and the. Uh, the, oh, the goal was that they would be they distributed. Would they, they would, would you know, I mean, in something. some cases we sent them okay. we, to be forwarded to uh, PTA okay. listservs. Um, in other cases, you know, obviously they're not letting us into classrooms to put no, them course. into students' backpacks. But um, the just to to recap that we conducted a workshop. Um, I right. and we have our street team goes out and some of a lot of what they do is to tell people about what we know so that's these are the crash statistics that we've seen this this is what's in our toolbox this is the project that we're trying to work on um, and then some of it is is collecting information so it's a little bit of a two-way street and providing information about this is our upcoming events this is you know all of those things so um, from a lot of in this project, because it's been a larger scale capital project, a lot of what they have done is in, in information distribution. So, um, so, so collecting 40 surveys, I believe, was at a, a, a small subset of the 25 right. locations. Not even with the low probability, right? Facto. Mm -hmm. Okay? You would at least have got a minimum of 120 back. Just low probability, don't worry about it. You know, it's one of those kind of formulas where from, you say if you distributed 12,000 to 12,000 households. Well, so the surveys were collected. Minimum, were, may I? But mm -hmm. minimum, you should have gotten, you know, more than 40. You got, you got 20. The surveys are just done in person. No, okay, so how many people, let me, for another question, maybe a follow up to this, how many people responded, um, as you mentioned, online? The online responses uh, are 
on into comments. So um, those are in a map <coughs> format. To, to I survey, don't have the number of that the off the top of my head. that you have 80%, 75%, 75%. Is that 80% of the 40 that was collected? Yes. That's my point. You know what I mean? That's exactly my point. It's also so 40. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry. Please. So 80% of 40 people. Mm -hmm. Do we know how many we're talking about? It's maybe, was it 30? Mm -hmm. Eight, maybe? I don't know. I'll give you that. We're still talking about 38 possibly people who represent a community or a proximity mm -hmm. of the people in that surrounding area where this project and maybe the tens of thousands. She said the whole district. No, not the whole district. You're saying that maybe they I'm limited to just the surrounding so areas. Because they, they did not distribute it throughout. That's a fact because right. neither of us received it. But they did focus on the surrounding area mm -hmm. of where the proposed project was going to happen. And I'm going to, I'm going to approximate maybe about tens of thousands of people in the surrounding area of surrounding where the proposed project mm -hmm. is going to be. We only heard from really and maybe most of that, probably 38 people, and, and, and 40 people got, got completed surveys, and these are the percentages of 40 people on the below, which is still far less for us to take in full consideration the amount of people who are in favor of this particular proposed project. 25. You know, that is not approximate, that's not an even near, nearly where we would like to be able to see the outreach efforts reach. When you want to say community said, based on our survey, we went to a thousand people and out of the thousand people, 80% of them said yes. Right? We're not even talking about a thousand people. We're talking about 40 people responded. We don't even know how many people responded by online because there's no way of verifying that. Right? So that's the, that's the issue that we've had in this district. Mm -hmm. with the outreach. Now, I've been out there with the DOT. I'm not one to speak from, you know, just from the side. We've offered our district office. We've partnered in the past with the outreach team. I see the young man there that's in the picture. I, we, we were there, we were together. Mm -hmm. Out on the streets, mm -hmm. right, during the hours of hype, like rush hour, so when people are coming home from work, mm -hmm. we'd be able to meet them and greet them as they are knocking on doors. That's what we did the day that we went out there on a project that was proposed for Fountain Avenue. Mm -hmm. That was our way of just trying to demonstrate to DOT the effort from which the, the outreach is supposed to take. Mm -hmm. How far are y'all willing to go? Not just taking a stack of flyers and sitting them at the front desk of a school is saying we gave out 12,000 flyers, Nathan, to 12,000 families. I would beg to differ. Yeah, I don't go to school. You know? So, and we don't even know a fact if they gave them up because there's no way of, of being able to check that. So if you want to really get a better sound and a better understanding of feedback from public versus when the public sees you guys going in the ground, right? And then they say, what's going on and all of that? And then they're caught off guard and you guys are already going in the ground. We can't, that's, that, that's, that's, that's in hindsight. We're trying to do a better job in the beginning. And outreach is very, very key. And getting sound community input is even more so important for us because we want to make decisions based on what the surrounding community and their approval or disapproval of it is. That's what we are here to do. Mm -hmm. So we this outreach effort strategy. is very, very poor and, um, and yeah. ineffective. If that's what you guys uh, have paid to do, you got to come up with a better outreach plan. And if this is what they're basing it, this yeah, matter. yeah, yeah, and that's, and that's, that's problematic to begin with. Mm -hmm. and, what it it's comes, great and what it comes yeah. down to is that, that when the community says, well, you approved all of this as a community board and we had no, we, nobody came to us, right. this is what's going to happen and we're going to look back. So we don't want to look back. Mm -hmm. I know I don't. No, you we, know, you're so, right. I'm with you. You right. know, so. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. You know, so. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I, I'd like to get to the community, but okay, okay from. Go ahead, Mr. Reddy. Leave him Mr. Reddy's number. The only thing I'm concerned about, because all this is true, and obviously <coughs> you guys didn't do a thorough outreach process, because Atlantic Avenue is already immobile. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna cut put it in a bike lane, which means it's gonna, you're gonna turn it into a one lane major thoroughfare. Wait a minute, because you still got parking at the curbside. 
Are you going to eliminate parking at the curbside? So, in this section, Atlantic Avenue is predominantly. I to, I'd like you to go back. I'm sorry. Go back to the bike lane with the raised curb. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah, there you go. The bottom left. No, so that's a that's a different location with so a different set of geometry. Yeah. So that's not ours. That's that's a photo of an example to sh to talk about some of the impacts the the after. But that, friend, that would, that is exactly what ours. No. No. That's just a. That's Queens Boulevard. Yeah. The, the goal of adding that was just to to point out some of the the effects. Yes. Okay. Even as an illustration. The this is this the is a more. Lane, right? Yes, but that's a, a very different okay, environment. Uh, so currently, there are three lanes on each side of, in each direction and parking. Under this proposal, we would be removing one travel lane in each direction, maintaining parking, and the median would be expanded to accommodate for the bike lane. We've done very thorough traffic analysis that indicates that this will not create additional congestion on the corridor because ultimately that is not our goal and we want to make sure that uh, the avenue moves and accommodates the drivers as well because our goal is not only to improve tra safety for pedestrians but also for motor vehicle occupants. So I we've. Apologize. I'm just not getting that because if you're gonna if you're gonna take a bike, put a bike lane in, leave parking right before before we had three lanes, and then you're gonna put in a bike lane, uh, leave parking. How do you? Yeah, take it yeah, how do you do that? The volumes have the existing volumes indicate that so typically when we do an analysis of a street before we make changes, we collect all the existing data and we see that in our our idea of uh, what is a congested lane is that typically above 700 vehicles per hour, give or take, depending on the conditions. But in this case, let's say about 700 is a, would be something we wouldn't want to remove a lane. In this case, that's not what we're seeing. We're seeing that the volumes at the peak hour are well below that. So well, there is not. Back to what the chairman said, they did on-site investigation, and that was not. The we case. collect. The other thing that we know is they they get ready to do construction over the bridge on yes. Atlantic Avenue. Mm -hmm. That coming over that bridge is already congested. Mm -hmm. So whatever you telling me that your scope is for 700 cars coming through there is not even valid. Mm -hmm. It's so, not valid for the people that live there when you use it. Now, no matter what this in. Uh, 37th District or the 41st, we to come out of East New York, the South Side, we got to go through that area. See what I'm saying? So it really affects everyone. And 40 people outreach at 1107, 1208, and 11239 zip code is really let no me, outreach at all. It's let fine. me just back up and say that the, the outreach that we've, we've conducted is not nearly the extent of our planning process. We, I don't think you had a workshop. Okay. We, we conduct, okay, the outreach is part of our planning process. Yes. Our planning process also includes very extensive traffic analysis where we, um, we put up cameras and tire uh, tubes that mm -hmm. cars run over and we collect a very extensive amount of uh, accurate traffic analysis. In, for many projects we work with consult, outside consultants who verify data. Um, so that's a sort of independent process from <coughs> this outreach. We also have our safety data, which we collect from NYPD. That goes through a very extensive cleaning process with, it's invo that involves the state DMV. So we work, we have a number of sort of channels of our planning process. The outreach is one component. It's obviously an extremely important component, and I hear what you're saying about the need to do more extensive outreach and hear what a broader sector of the community feels about this project and, and all of our projects, but that's just one piece of the process. So if, let's say, we went to the community and the community said, we don't want any part of this, that could be, play a huge role. However, we are also very focused on improving safety and we have a number of proven tools in our toolbox that we might want to look at because of the safety data that we've collected that we have from the police department. So that's another channel, that's another factor in, in our planning process that we take so just gonna, as seriously. I'm just going to ask, ask, a, quick, yeah. I'm just gonna ask a quick question about procedure. You know, what, what is the procedural aspect of, of this plan and, you know, where, where are we? Can I just add something just to the end of that? Um, the, 
the Atlantic Avenue Bridge Project and the congestion farther west on Atlantic Avenue, we're not removing a lane of traffic west of Logan Street. So a lot of the traffic comes off of Atlantic Avenue onto the conduit towards JFK. So the reason why we're able to remove a travel lane east of the conduit is because a ton of that traffic comes off. And that's why, so again, we recognize there is congestion west of, of the conduit that is bad, and we're not touching that. East of, east of the conduit, though, we have a little bit more flexibility given the, the, the traffic numbers we were, we were able to, to get back. So maybe you can answer my question, which is, where are we in the grand scheme of the process? And for, for phase two. Mm -hmm. So because this is a phase project, phase one and phase two are on slightly different timelines. Phase one is scheduled to begin implementation in the next few months. Um, when it says initial construction, initial construction is, is involves getting permits and really setting up um, the very, very pre-construction, really. Uh, so for this project, where design and outreach happen sort of simultaneously, the next stage of the process involves um, what we call final design, uh, we conduct a little bit more outreach, and then we ultimately um, have our construction scheduled to begin in 2019. So between now and then, um, a lot of what ha needs to happen is the finalization of design and uh, working with contractors and um, sort of really scoping out some of the, those details. So you are still accepting feedback uh, that may go into the final design. Is that correct? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, one last thing about Reader that they was shown in the pictures here. The, excuse me, can you say it again? The Greenery. The greenery. Mm -hmm. And if you looked at the Greenery that you showed, it was really bad. It was it's overgrown. It's overgrown. Mm -hmm. And um, okay, who was responsible for yes. maintaining that? Because that's, you put this greenery in, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I was just going to church yesterday, I, I was at church this week, and crossing and passing through that greenery, I was really taken aback because mm -hmm. I was scared. You went to church? Yeah, I don't know what was in it. Mm -hmm. I was scared, you know? So when you see stuff like this, and mm -hmm. I love green, you need, there has to be a, a, a plan to Absolutely. And I have not seen that mm -hmm. throughout mm -hmm. Brooklyn or even Brooklyn. And for this project, because it's one of these four Great Streets Capital Project, there is uh, a maintenance contract as part of the project. So with, with, a, with DOT, with an. So with <laughs> Hi, I'm Olivia Gibson. I am also. That mic is not working. I'm sorry. We don't have PA. I'm sorry. I'm a little under the weather, so I'm going to do my best. No, no, no. I'm just for recording, not for audio. Yeah. Um, so. So the, yeah. the, the median maintenance contract will, is set up through DOT, so DOT is funding the maintenance, and there will be um, a bid and a contractor will do the maintenance, but it is DOT's responsibility so that for this project, for the Great Streets project, there is a, there is a specific maintenance contract attached to that, run through DOT. But they didn't uh, sign it yet, right? All right, all right, so we're gonna, ma'am, we're going to now um, ask for questions uh, from the audience. I'm gonna ask that you raise your hand, I will acknowledge you, please stand up, give us your name, um, and keep your questions specific to the topic at hand, um, and you have two minutes uh, to give your question. So I saw this young woman's hand up first, Please stand up, give us your name and your Hi, question. Hi, my name is Lois Clark, um, I'm 11207. I didn't receive any information about this entire project. Um, if you had said you went to schools, that's for people that have children. I have no reason to hang out in a school unless I'm working for the Bulls. Um, have you contacted co-workers and you know people that are doing stuff in the community that would know or would hear about what's going on? 
we didn't get any info. So this meeting, is it on what you're just telling us what you're just gonna do? Or you're telling us what you're planning to do? That's right. That's, I wanna know, mm -hmm. you know, the whole project that you're saying, mm -hmm. is this just letting us know, okay, this is what's gonna happen? Mm -hmm. um, we've already decided or we're trying to see if we can do this. Is that what this meeting about? So we're interested in in feedback, like you know, your comment and question about the the maintenance and and um, any specific comments about the project that you have. If you have specific feedback um, in terms of the major design components, um, those are not necessarily things we would be able to change. But if there are specific feedback. Um, or things you'd like to see, um, that's something we're interested in hearing. And, and it, so this meeting is just for any suggestions we would like to suggest. This is already decided. I just want to know, you know, is this going to just be done and we're just being told what's going to be done? That's, I just want to know if it's set. Is this concrete? Mm -hmm. That's all. It's not. Final finalized, but the. I don't know what that means. I don't it, know what that's not final finalized. It's yes or no. It's yes. It, yes. yes. Oh, wow. I'm very surprised and I appreciate that yeah. because yeah. I did not know that that was procedure that the city makes these decisions for communities with regardless of their opinion. Then why go through this whole formality? In fact, if the decision is already made. Why are we here? Why are we here? So that it's for the record, so you can yes. say that you've had another public meeting with the community yes. board? Yes. Is that, this is nothing but formalities? Is this a joke? Definitely not a joke, but it's something. So we, we take very seriously our, our, we have a responsibility to notify the community of the work we're doing. Or the work that you're going to do, and not in, asking in the community of their opinion about such work that's proposed. Yeah. That's why I kept referring to it as a proposal. Yeah, so right. this is where I thought that, which, these things were before <coughs> on this level. It says proposal benefits. So I'm very surprised to learn that because then we should take it back and we should have some way in which as a board that we we disagree with that formality. That, there's, that there shouldn't be this sort of, like this is a joke. Like if you're gonna go forward with your plans anyway, why are you asking us our opinion? It doesn't matter. Someone else is thinking for us and deciding for us. Mm -hmm. And that's what, we, that's what we stand strong against. And that's our problem with the rezoning. And it's been always our problem with the city as far as, you know, as you guys handle our community. You can't just do that. You can't be dictated to. You gotta take us into consideration and not do some flimsy outreach sort of effort and say, check the box that we, we made a presentation before the community board. Moving on to the next. So we're wasting our time. There's no sense in us even going any further, we have no real set input, no impact on you all's decisions. And I'm just very taken aback by that, and I'm going to speak to the Department of Transportation, the Commissioner's Office, or whoever else, or the Mayor's Office, as to that procedure, and how is that said that's, that's the way these things go. I don't, I don't agree with it at all. Thank you so much. But well, while, well, while we're here, there are going to hear from the community, and the community's concerns and the community's questions. I recognize the gentleman in the back. Please stand up, give us your name and your question. Winston Lawrence, 11208. Um, a couple of questions, and thank you for the presentation. My understanding is that this is the second phase of this great street project. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yes. Was this board notified about the first about the first phase? Yes. yes. Do they know about it? December yeah. 2015, we had a meeting um, and we presented it. And the work should begin in uh, later this year or later this season. And the board will be notified before that work starts. So this board knows about phase one. Mm -hmm. And this is phase two. Correct. So the board has a knowledge of. Was there a consultation for phase one? The similar process. Similar process? Mm -hmm. And the board knew about that? Mm -hmm. And so this is the second phase. You're continuing from that. 
Okay, I just want to be clear. Mm -hmm. <coughs> My name is Mayam Moreno. My family lives in Long Island 207. And we live on Atlantic Avenue. So, and I don't know who got the mailing or not, but we got it. We got a mailing for a survey, and we got a mailing for a meeting. And the meeting was about how there were changes on Atlantic, and we wanted to know what you wanted. We get to see all that traffic. We get to see people who are you know, who are clipped or who are hit or car accidents, this is really heavy. So we understand why they're not doing that on our side of the avenue. We live past Logan towards Pennsylvania. But on the other side, I mean, after Rockaway Boulevard, I mean, Rockaway, yeah. the, where it's the right. end, it's two lines. It's two, two lines of traffic. People are coming already from Crosshair, Woodhaven, right. and it's two lanes, and then it, com it comes straight. Right. So if they take away one lane, it's the same thing. Only they, once they get to Logan, or once they get to Conduit, it becomes a three lanes because everybody's coming off the front. There's madness, that's where it's right. like really So my question, well, what, my question was how it's gonna affect phase one or where are. But right now, whatever is happening in Atlantic is not working. It's really dangerous. Where we live, I mean, we have crossings on like either side, but if you want to get to Van Sipplin, the A train, or the J train, if you have to cross, you have to really like maneuver traffic. And some people have been hit. I don't know how many have been killed, hopefully none, but people are, are like risking their lives to cross the planet. So we like changes. We want to see something different because whatever has been done before, it's not working. And it's, it's a shame, like other, other neighborhoods are getting changes and we're not, we're sort of like 25 years and we see the same thing, the same thing. So at this point, it's either no change or something that's gonna do it. And I'm seeing things on Queens that they're like taking away lanes and it's supposed to be like super traffic heavy and all of a sudden it's like no fatalities. People are not getting hit as much. So. My family and I are willing to give it a chance. It's crazy because it's super crazy traffic, but at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm not for change. I'm not for like leaving things in a way that's not gonna work because it's not working right now. It isn't. And uh, every time my, my cousin goes out to work because he has to go to the new lots, he walks all the way from Atlantic to new lots to catch a train. It's like a 20 minute walk. He's doing that because there are no connections and he cannot ride either because, to be honest, most of the traffic past Atlantic is like you share a car and your bike. And my, my cousin is young, he's younger than me and he's willing to take the chance, but we don't like it. I take the bike sometimes, I have to share the traffic. I don't like it, but I have to do it because, to be honest with you, I cannot afford the car or the insurance or the parking or whatever is coming. So right now, this for me, I've been part of those sounding sessions, and we got to say, oh yes, they need a light here, or they need to do something there. So if they can do it on my side of the project, I want to see something like that. Because right now, my family, or yeah, we're at risk, and I don't, I don't think it's right. You have a block association? No, or at least I have. I haven't heard one. And I've been attending the transportation recently because I found out about it. I think the community board is doing more to let people know that they're out there to help like people in my in my side. But before this it was, you know, you got to hear things sometimes like once in a while. And, and how did you get notified? In the mail. You get something in the mail, and but you live right on Atlantic, so maybe they didn't because, say anything about mail anything. But we yeah. got something in the mail? Because they live on it. Yeah, so that yeah, but they didn't say that they mailed anything out. So yes, or at least nice. that's how we found out. The meeting was at Warwick and Atlantic. There's a public school there. Mm -hmm. And that's where we went. There's a whole bunch of people there. We were not the only ones. I want to I thank you for your comments. And uh, I would like to inform you that uh, every committee is allowed at large members, mm -hmm. which uh, are members uh, of the community that participate in the meetings but are not technically members of the community board, and you might talk about that offline, because you have been coming to our meetings regularly, and I would love for you to have a more active role. Oh, I see. 
right, thank you. We're going to talk about that offline. Um, uh, I see this uh, young lady, then we'll go with the police officer. So, ma'am, if you could just stand up and give us your name. My name is Jacqueline Hutchins. I'm at 11208. I know we're discussing phase two, but is there anything for me to see how phase one, because that's the part that I'm interested in, phase one, this, that I can see what your final analysis is going to be for phase one, because right now, I'm on Beverly Street. I used to be able to get across Atlantic Avenue or go to the other side. <coughs> now there's no left turns. So I have to go down here to Queens to make a left turn just to get on the Interboro or so is there anything that you have that can show me what the final analysis will be for phase one from Pennsylvania? Yeah, Pennsylvania down to Logan. In terms of the design or the design, we don't have uh, the design for that right now, but we can provide that to the board yeah. and to we can take your contact info and get that to you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and just to summarize what it would be, the, the major parts of the design proposal that's going to start construction, I'm sorry, the, the plan that's going to start construction early this year um, for phase one. Um, I don't know if you want to go back to the slide that shows sort of like a, a, the rendering. It's basically what we'll be doing in phase two, except no bike lane, but it'll it'll still have the raised uh, the raised and planted median, and then at intersections. I don't know if in the uh, uh, overhead shot it shows. Um, there's no there's no examples of uh, curb extensions, but the, there will be uh, in uh, I don't know over at least a dozen locations, um, expanded <coughs> curbs, um, so it's shorter distances to cross, um, new uh, safer median tips so you can wait in the middle of the street without fear of getting hit f uh, for the light to change. So a lot of just like little fixes at, at intersections uh, to make it safer for pedestrians, but there's like 20 or 25 intersections in phase one, so we can, we can give you the exact details of it. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Officer? Can you answer my question with uh, Just give us your name, please. I'm uh, a I'm mainly sitting on Atlantic and uh, Logan Street, which is one of the main yeah. intersections where uh, people get hit by cars. And I see it. So Atlantic and Logan is terrible. And I'm, you can't make the left. You can't make the U-turn. Um, Rushdown traffic, we can't make a U turn. There's signs all over the place on that. You would say pedestrians are in the crosswalk. Um, so, Atlantic and Logan is a terrible location, and I, I noticed that you said you wanted to put a light on uh, Atlantic and Logan to make a left to go northbound on Logan. Um, That's what which it, would, it would cause a problem to a certain extent of Atlantic and uh, Atlantic and Penn. So, you have people most likely taking that left turn only straight, and it may cause a, a car accident for people like uh, side-swiping each other, because now the person stopped, quote unquote, in a left turn only lane, mm -hmm. and then they're disobeying the favorite marking, the green light, and then they're also just gonna go seem straight, mm -hmm. um, I think. But, you know, coming across that, the, my question was, no bike lanes in phase one? No. Correct. Okay, and then for phase two, I, I agree with you guys on the extent of, Flush traffic. As soon as you, as soon as the conduit hits, yeah, you're, 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 it's total flush traffic. So, I'll have to get to. so I'm, I'm sitting on Euclid, and for Euclid and uh, Atlantic, that uh, underpass, a lot of cars are speeding. So I'm running speeding zones. So because now you're coming out there and you're going 45 miles per hour, it's a 25 mile safe zone. So a lot of people are speeding, and now they're, they're taking that as a ramp to just take off and not uh, fly down Atlantic. Does that camera work? Oh, well, there's no, the cameras are, are laid down. Oh, yeah. Usually they're in the camera. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, okay. but then with the uh, Crescent, I've seen that sign get up so long, no one, not a lot of people do make that left turn anymore. So that, the left turn ban? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like on uh, Crescent Atlantic, that sign is beautiful because now no one makes that turn. But were you saying that, Come out of Spearman, yeah. to be able to make the quick ride in the left. Well, you see now, 
That's Highland. So now Highland, they put a sign, no left, no U-turn. Right. Berryman, you can, Berryman Street, it's- Berryman Street, you can cross and go west. You can, yeah. Or you can make the right turn. Yeah, you you have to, to, you have to go one way or the other. Yes, Berryman Street, now people are using the White Castle as a cut for no, and that's causing, no, that's, that's, that's well, that's, it's only one lane coming out of that exactly. uh, high lane, I'm so guilty. you get and stuck but you can, but trying to do that. No, an actual violation. You're not to no, use you're not allowed yeah. to use that. But so for Barrington Street, which is in phase yeah. one, yeah. you yeah. can get make a left turn and then go north to close to Fulton Street. Right, yeah. or um, I used to make it where at Logan, make the right and then go down to yeah. Logan and make the left. Now Logan I'm, can't. So now, but now you can't, and you got to go. When, when, when people are making that left turn on Logan Street, everyone's confused. They're like, how, how can I get to Jackie? How can I get to Fulton? And I, I, me personally, I tell them, make the Jersey left. Go down Milford Street, go down Montauk, make yeah. the left on Liberty, uh -huh. and go left. Which, you know what, it's, it's gonna save the car accidents. Because now, making that left turn on Logan is, is yeah. very dangerous. It's th people making a U-turn to go to Wendy's. Yeah. I come down yeah. Liberty. I'm yeah. down, I have to, like, consciously Remember, use, make the use, right use on Liberty, and, not Liberty right. and then make the left yeah, on Logan to go yeah, across. Because Logan Street is, and that's where that's where we mainly stay. Logan Street, we've had the this year alone, we have three people hit by cars. Wow. So Logan Street, they we need to fix Logan Street, and then what they're what they're trying to propose is a great idea in my eyes. It's, but don't get rid of the left turn on Logan to go south. No, 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 the right turn. Well, right turn to go south, yeah, but you can't, right now you can't make the left turn on Logan. Logan no. Street, so you're forced to go straight. No, I'm talking about when I'm coming off the Interborough okay, and, and I come down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do street. not get rid of that, because then I have to the travel. Lane, yeah. But they have a light there, and that's yeah. not a problem. But that's not. But why so much. They, you, you don't Thank feel so there like another light going um, um, eastbound at um, Logan with Chair Mitchell? Yes. So, um, Thank you for all. Are you, are you done, Mother? You're welcome. Are you finished? I'll talk to him later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, just for the record, um, two things. As as you can hear, phase one is totally yeah. different than phase two. Yeah. Okay. So, as far as the board's position on phase one versus phase two, they're two distinct, different proposals. And now we learn that these are plans, right? That's 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 one. Two. I don't want to be mistaken, our board to be mistaken, as if we are not for change. We are for change. We believe in change. Change is something that is inevitable. It's going to happen anyway. We, it's how you change, OK? Not what you do, it's how you do it. And so what we're saying as a board, we welcome change. But how you go about it, it has to be a process where we're respected because there's existing people who live there and are about there, around about, and we agree. We want to improve traffic conditions. We want to save lives. We want to reduce fatalities and reduce accidents. We are for that as a community board. We want the same sort of patterns that you see in other neighborhoods, as said mentioned. We, we welcome that, but it's how you do it. You don't dictate, you don't impose, you don't you know, disregard the people who seem to be a part of the process or the plan, but really they're not. Because there's another body of people who are making these decisions and they're going forward regardless to whom or what. And we don't agree with that and we don't think that that's true democracy. We don't think that that's something that should be, you know, accepted by no person, nowhere, no matter where they live. So I want you to understand that we are, we, are, we want the upgrades, we want, we want, you know, we want, our, we want the improvements that every neighborhood is, is also experiencing, but at the same time, it can't be at an exchange for total disrespect and disregard, because that's where we have issue, when the department of, of the agencies are taking somewhat of a mm -hmm. haphazard or lackadaisical approach as to how they inform people. And I'm glad to hear that some of you received some of these notifications. But understand that the mass majority of people did not. And so we can't just speak for, just a few of us can't make the decision that impacts tens of thousands of people. You know, we have to do a better job 
and trying to get a, a, a really consensus of uh, understanding of what the, the surrounding public. I'm glad that the police department and this highway traffic division is here yeah. to add their testimony yeah. because it, it's, it's, it's on the ground, it's, 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 it's real, and it's important for us to know that we do agree based on your data from your other studies that this is very dangerous you know, sort of intersections and, 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 and traffic patterns. We want to improve it. But it has to be with, we want inclusiveness. And that's really all that we've been saying about this whole rezoning period. And there's reasons why Atlantic is focused on versus Liberty, yes. versus Pickin, yes. and versus other neck of the woods that community must understand. Yeah, what's yeah. also at play. Yeah. There's a reason why they're prioritizing Atlantic Avenue mm -hmm. than they are some of the side streets mm -hmm. where people live, and they also complained about their streets and need improvements as well. But the department is not prioritizing that. This is where the rezoning is focused. Mm -hmm. And so as a result of such, they have now become the priority uh, as far as who receives the resources. And so we have issue with that as well. And so these are things for the record that I'm making very clear that, you know, and I want public not to be mistaken or confused by the boards, the committees, um, positions that we have taken respectfully. We, we actually are your voices. We, we take it, everything into consideration that you all have said. And we hope that you, please, if you do have further contact and communications or ideas, that you let our district office know, that you contact our committees and so forth, and come, as the chair has mentioned, out to the meetings so that we can hear more of your voices. We welcome you and your input, and we thank you for that. So I just wanted to end with that, respectfully. Sir, you had your hand. Yeah, could I, have a, could I ask a clarification question? Yes, did the board have any say in the rezoning? Did you have, did you give opinions? We reviewed that? the entire rezoning okay. that was <laughs> proposed at one point. That is now a plan of action. It's been, uh, we, uh, we voted. Okay. Uh, we gave, we're an advisory board. Okay. All boards are advisory. Okay. So we kind of gave our advice. <laughs> okay. But that's it. You would think that others would listen to the advice of the community and the opi opinion and position of community. And so um, normally, in, in most cases, the elected officials who ultimately have the vote listen to the advice of the community board and other bodies. But in this case, our board voted against the rezoning. Okay. We did not, as a board, agree with all three phases of it. However, the borough board that it went to the next phase, they uh, concurred with the community board and they voted against it as well. However, when it went to the city council, thereafter, well, the city planning, excuse me, city planning after the borough board voted for it, and then it went to the city council le uh, era level, and the city council member for this district voted in favor of the rezoning, and most of his colleagues went with that council member's vote, and so it was voted up, and ultimately the mayor, who ultimately signs off on it thereafter, all of those processes, of course, went with the vote of the city council's body. So city council voted against us in overwhelming majority, um, except for a few council members who voted alongside the community voice and the borough on um, board's vote. So that's the democracy. That's all that's so, so you're right. So with that said, so we now have since have accepted the fact that we've been, the, the rezoning is coming forward. So now we shifted our, our position as a board, and now there was a number of different promises made. One was that we will take your further, you know, opinions and advice going forward more seriously. Right? So, you know, we're now in a police stage so to speak. We gotta make sure that they do everything that they say they're gonna do it, how they say they're gonna do it. And so we have, we're not complaining over spilled milk. As a community board, we move past that. You know, we are now focusing on making sure that the, it's how they do it. Not what they do now, it's how they do it. And it doesn't, it doesn't disregard us because that's been our position all the while. This confirms the board's original position as to how communities like ours are treated when the city or other special interest folks want something in their favor. Do you have your hand up? 
I mean, I, I, I got an invitation to, to attend something? the meeting, so. No, no, no. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I understood. That's okay. But so, I, I went to a meeting, I went to a meeting that was saw, so I don't, some people maybe got and some didn't get, maybe yeah. same thing with surveys, but, but I went to a meeting. Yes, understood. And, and I heard, I went to a school building. Good. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you attended. That's good to know. I'm glad to hear that and learn that some of you did attend it, but, you know, I'm, I'm being frank, and this is no disrespect to any individuals that work for the agency, yeah. but calling a spade a spade, <laughs> they're disrespectful. And they don't, just, they don't regard community as best as they could and should, okay? They do a very lackadaisical, light approach to solving and saying I, we got community's feedback. They got to do much better as an agency. And, and that's really what we're saying. So how can you watch the that or rectify that from this point moving forward? Well, we take note. That's what this hearing is all about. This is what, you know, we have actually now, all of this is public record. So we're putting this in, um, pretty much making notice that we are dis you know, disgusted with the process. And so as it continues to go forward, we can constantly pipe it up and keep taking the issues of disrespect to the other authorities of our elected officials levels and so forth and hopefully they will concur or side with us in understanding and they too will have a chance to ask these uh, agencies similar questions relating to the plans as well. Right. I hear you, but most of us unfortunate but the reality is they go with the money. Money talks. When you have a low income community, people with big interests coming in, want to spend money, be gentrification, all that, you know, sad to say it's what it is, you know, follow people follow the money. Even like you said, we went to it, all of his cohorts and co-workers and agreed with it. They, they, so it's That's why Atlantic Avenue getting flowers now. <laughs> Which is also why it's important that we do more of this. As a community, right. we come together <coughs> and we kind of constantly just keep yeah. communicating with each other. Right. Um, and trying to get more people to turn out in other neighborhoods and other communities that look much larger. Not that it matters, but the few of us that's present is, is suffice for this meeting. But we just got to continue to just rally the people so people can all say something at the same time and give off a louder sort of voice. And that's how sometimes things get, you know, halted a little bit and maybe there's some changes made along the way. But we, we are certainly on our way. So I don't want to take away from your presence here tonight. Right. Uh, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm sure I speak on behalf of the committee. We would want to thank you for attending because this is what we, what, why we volunteer our time to, 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 to do. And we would like, you know, for it to continue going forward. Okay. Thank there, you. There are some there are some systematic issues that are present that the uh, chairman has mentioned, and these systematic issues are the sorts of issues that we're trying to dismantle. And the only way that we can dismantle these issues is one meeting at a time, and that's essentially why we're here. It's to bring uh, you know focus to these issues to the agencies that that need to hear it. Um, I was about to. I was about to ask for any other questions, please. Because um, they said that they were going to supply some information that they failed to bring to you guys, like the outreach planning, um, the rest of the statistics, mm -hmm. the schematic for phase one. Mm -hmm. So they're going to give you. If anyone else who is not a member of the board would like to see anything in particular, just you know, give us your contact information and we can get that well, to you. Could you just give it to the board too? Sure. Yeah. Oh. I, yeah. I took we, have a, we, have a process, we have a process oh. for doing that. They would give it to the district office and the district office mm -hmm. would disseminate the information. But we are going to hold DOT accountable for getting us the information that they uh, offered well, to bring to us today. you got for phase one, like 35? <laughs> That's a another good question that I I have to say I was not as in I was not involved in the planning of phase one so I can't speak to that. Okay. Uh, do we have any other? Yeah, one more question. Mr. Riggins, please. Phase one, there is no bicycle lane. That's correct. So uh, the bicycle is coming down Atlantic Avenue, mm -hmm. and they take the side road next to the bridge. What direction would they have to go in order to stay in compliance with the traffic rules and regulations? Mm -hmm. Bridge. The bridge, no, you, you're talking about towards... George, let's say Georgia Avenue. They were Georgia Avenue. So there was no, there's not going to be a bike lane right. in, that, in this section. So basically from the end of the bike lane, which uh, in, in phase two, continuing, well, want, okay, continuing keep west... It simple, keep it simple, layman terms. 
I'm, I'm coming from yeah. Ocean, Ocean Hill. I'm coming from Ocean mm -hmm. Hill. I'm going to the conduit. There are other bike lanes. Tell, okay, so, all right, so good. So now Liberty. So why would you divert someone off of Liberty onto Atlantic Avenue in phase two and put them in a heated traffic zone when they could have continued on Liberty across the conduit? Over there, those, the bike lane on Liberty does not continue all the way east. It's only in the area around uh, like Ocean Hill. It goes all the way to the conduit, Liberty Avenue. Um, yeah, but the bike lane does. But I think the- I'm saying point. That's my, oh, yeah. I mean, we can, we can look into, we can look into, to, that bike lane, but I'm saying, where is, what is the logic for you to divert traffic bike lanes onto Atlantic Avenue in the middle of phase two when there was none in phase one and they already had access to, our, to East New York? I think that really, who, I mean, who's making no, no sense? The, as we, you know, and as the officer pointed out, the, the traffic is lower in phase two than it is in phase one. That's something that we've seen from our traffic analysis. That. So that's where part right of the now, logic. You all did a survey, and you realized that, that those bike lanes would have to be on Liberty Avenue going certain distance west, right? Which was the end of phase one. I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. We, we didn't do a survey. On I'm not talking about a survey. You, whatever plan, you got bike lanes on Liberty Avenue, right? Yes. Right now. Yes. Right. yes. But see, these are not hard questions, because you got to know what phase one is. So you have bike lanes on Liberty Avenue in phase one. Yes. CD West until they get up to pay phase two, and then you divert them onto Atlantic Avenue. Off Liberty. From Liberty to Atlantic it's Avenue. Not from Liberty. Excuse me? There is no biking on Liberty. Right, that's what, that's so what we're saying. So your question is why can't we extend that? Come on, this is not a hard question. Man. Why would you not have a bike lane continue on Liberty and put that bike lane on Atlantic Avenue when they could have, you could have continued that Liberty Avenue bike lane all the way to the conduit? So because it's not there, I mean, you didn't plan to put it there. That's the only thing. Well, so we, Atlantic Avenue is a uniquely dangerous street in terms of pedestrian and all, all users. So we have this focus on Atlantic Avenue. Oh, so you're saying bike lanes will make it more safe. It's a yes. Tool, as Wilfred said, it's a tool in our toolkit. We, we, there's excessive space for cars east of Logan, as we, as we, as we mentioned. And so this is a way, sorry, this is a way for us to calm traffic and also provide a safe path. Because there are some cyclists that do use Atlantic, even though there's three lanes and it's very unsafe for them. So this, is, this, provide, this provides for them. And, and, and pedestrians also have to consider being, being hit by a bicycle because that happens quite often. So you, see that's what I'm saying. If the community board was really involved, I don't think, I think they would have made that suggestion in the, in the initial phase to have that go all the way through phase two to, to the conduit. It really don't make sense putting bike, bikes up there now. Why? For what? They don't have to. So do. just to, to back up a little bit, our project, this project initi was initiated because of the crash data on Atlantic Avenue. That's where we as an agency are coming from. Our goal is to reduce traffic fatalities. So when we find a pro when we identify a project, that's the first thing that we're looking at. We come to this idea of bike lanes through that lens, and that's one of the ways that we have one of the tools in our toolbox that works on Atlantic based on the geometry of the street, based on the existing traffic volumes, based on the connections in the neighborhood. So, but everything that we do is through the lens of reducing the number of people who are killed or severely injured on the street. And that's really our goal at the end of the day. And the, the reality is that the, most of those people who are killed, hurt, even if it's just a, a, you know, a rear end crash, those people live in this neighborhood. So that's our goal. And we know that, you know, that maybe people in the community you may feel different ways, but sounds like there are people who do feel that this is a good idea. This well, is a this is a that. tool. Well, I don't want to be long winded. Let me just interject. We understand because we went through this whole rezoning process mm -hmm. in detail. Hundreds of hours, hundreds of hours, right? I can understand everybody gonna to agree to safety. But you could make you could put a safety component on Atlantic Avenue without putting a bike lane. The bike lane is the mayor's initiative, and that's that's his thing, that's his baby. So no matter what, he won't bike lanes. That is that's that's not even practical to have a bike lane on, on, up on Atlantic Avenue um, and, and say you're gonna increase safety. You know what's gonna happen? Bikers gonna get hit, bikes are gonna hit pedestrians. That's just the way it is. You didn't come with any statistics 
on an accident of bikes. Yeah, there are. There are. We do have that. We know that there aren't as many bicyclists hit which on Atlantic Avenue. Which, 14, which is an incomplete study. We already know that's an incomplete study because you only This is the, the data that we have to date. We don't have the mo data that's to present because of it, this is the data that we have available to us at this okay. time. So you got bicycles, you got 15. Yeah, you're missing the last five years. And, and that's the, that's the, you don't have data. So there is no, you have no data to, to base it on that it's going to improve safety. This is the data, most recent data that we have. You can't, you can't get more recent data than this for any street in the city. Well, the only thing I'm saying, you don't have enough data to make a definitive answer of whether it's going to be safe or not. That's a selling point that you bring into our community to get us to go along with it. When we've installed a very similar design on a very similar wide arterial street which, with very high crashes for pedestrians and motor vehicle occupants on Queens Boulevard, this geometry of the street is a little bit different. No, like but the a lot different. It's a lot different, like but the, the design of the, the bike lane against the median, okay, that's, that's kind of the, the design that we put in here. What we saw is that the numbers of bicyclists went up 150%. What we saw is that safety for pedestrians improved 63%. There was a 63% decline in pedestrian injuries on that stretch. We also saw a 28% decline, decline in the total crashes on that stretch. So the bike lane is a tool, but it's all, it, it obviously it is a, uh, something that we think is good because it helps Cyclists. However, it's also something that improves safety for pedestrians and motor vehicle but you occupants. Said it's not. It's not efficient for every environment. It's not every right for every environment. I mean, now does Queen Bull Queens Boulevard have like 50 left turns? You got to go to Queens just to make a left turn. Do they have it's, all these side streets? In terms streets? of, so you know, we think about Atlantic Avenue as a key. You know, it's in this east-west connection, right? It's that you can't. It is a different kind of neighborhood. It's not residential as, as residential as East New York. Right. So it's mm -hmm. a whole different type of neighborhood, Queens Boulevard. I go to Queens Boulevard all the time. No way is it in comparison right. it's to the land again. It's a no different way. kind of neighborhood, but in terms of the fact that it's a long arterial street that runs across the that's boulevard, right. it's very similar. And the fact that's, that if, that's, if, that's, if that's, you... That's the similarity. Of it. Because how many lanes is it across? It's no, eight travel lanes across. Residential area compared to industrial, commercial, business, all of that is on, on Queens Boulevard. Restaurants, Queens Boulevard has way more different types. The speed limit is both 25 miles an hour. That's the citywide yeah. speed limit. However, they were both identified as great streets as part of this Vision Zero Great Streets project because they have, they they do they are different. They do have different land uses. They run through different neighborhoods. That's right. But we have seen that there are similar kinds of crash patterns. So the left turns, the fact that people come up to this street and they they if you make a left turn off of it, then you know you want to cross it. That a lot of the similar things that people you know have concerns about, they're very similar in that way. There's also the similarity that buses run all the way along it, um, parking on the outsides of the street. There are similar, there are neighborhoods on Queens Boulevard that are somewhat similar and there are a lot of auto body shops in certain places. Only one bus that runs down. There are parts of Queens city, Boulevard that city, only have. Si yes, it's only one mm -hmm. city bus that runs mm -hmm. down oh. Atlantic Avenue. Q24. Avenue. Mm -hmm. And that's the Q24. Right. Compared to how many buses run down there, it, as I said, they are very, they are different streets, but there are a lot of similarities. So, everything that was applied on Queens Boulevard would not be applied here. Okay. But some of the components and some of the treatments we think are applicable here. And the fact that we saw such uh, positive results from this treatment to us is an indicator that a similar kind of treatment with understand, an understanding of the local conditions here would result in similar positive impacts. So, this, so, so let's let, I'm, gonna, I'm going to just ask for um, any other questions uh, to DOT before we thank them for coming out and presenting. I see the officer has his hand up. Please introduce yourself. So who's your 75th precinct? I work everything north of the land yet, so. Uh, my question is, you're putting a bike lane at the center meeting. Mm -hmm. 
that's going east and westbound mm -hmm. from Logan Street all the way to Rockford. That's yeah. the plan. How are you terminating and starting that bike lane at that's Logan? It. And what are you also doing with the proposed school that's on between Logan and Chestnut that's there? Because that's a very dangerous intersection with three lanes of Atlantic going to the two lanes of the condo merging at Logan Street. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. So we don't, we didn't show that as our uh, sample um, block here because it's obviously not a typical block. In terms of the start and end of the project, uh, so the, the cyclist for the majority of the project is against the median. And then uh, when they come to the end, if you are a cyclist and you want to continue straight, uh, more confident cyclist, more, uh, someone who's more familiar, um, would be able to, if they have the green light, to continue and then merge back into traffic. Uh, we, that's, however, we, however, we, what we will also have is um, a, what we call a bicycle box where cyclists, mo the majority of cyclists will wait at the end of the, the lane, wait for the light to turn red, and then use this extra space that'll be between where the vehicles stop and the crosswalk. So there'll be like a green box there. The majority of cyclists will use that space while the pedestrians are crossing to come over back to the sort of to the curbside. Absolutely. So Absolutely. So Anything we do is fault if they disobey the sign and they, they mm -hmm. take it on themselves yes. to be an expert and get the And control. we have many similar treatments to this throughout the city where a cyclist is on the left side of traffic and then the tr that treatment ends and they need to merge back. So we work off of federal and state guidelines when we're designing these kinds of things um, and anything that we do will adhere to those so guidelines. So to, 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 sir, oh, sir, to, sir, 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 you can ask a question. I would ask you to stand up, Thank give us your name. Jason Hill, resident of East New York, Thanks so much. 1207. So to, to reiterate what you just said, are you going to have a sign posted the more confident cyclists can go forward, proceed? So the, I don't know the exact language, but typically we don't have that many words on our, on our signs. But uh, what the a sign would likely say is that cyclists, um, and then usually there's just arrows and sort of diagrams because we want to make sure that they're also accessible to everyone even if they don't uh, read English um, so the sign would likely have a um, you know the a diagram of a cyclist along with an arrow and a yield you know that the bike lane is ending um, things like that so no, no disrespect will, will the sign be less confusing than your explanation yes okay okay, okay. <laughs> So we're so we're near we're nearing the end of our public hearing. So let's try to ask questions that have not been asked before, so that we can get information that DOT has not already provided to us. So I'm going to recognize Mr. Riggins. Please keep it brief. Now you said there are there is a little bit of room space for suggestions. Mm -hmm. Those bike lanes. What if you still close that those bike lanes, but you put planters instead of bikers, and left the bikers on, on Libby Avenue? Is that possible? That is not possible with this design. It's done. It's done. It's done. Why do you say it's not possible? <laughs> that is uh, outside of the scope of changes that we're able no, to make. No, it cannot, it cannot be outside of the scope because it's a suggestion coming from the community. Yeah, but there's still requests I mean, we're, we're happy to take the, a comment about it, uh, about the. the chairman about it. That's, that's all I want to know. Listen, uh, Nathan, our uh, DOT rep is writing, so that, that's a so, Can that be out of scope? This is rezoning. We got plenty uh, of time. This so, is not a part of the rezoning. Not at all. Uh, the last this is not related to the rezoning. I'm going to take Mr. Riggins. Riggins. It's not related to the rezoning project. Mr. Riggins, excuse Sorry. me. Sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. I left my gavel at home, but I'm going to bring it next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring it. 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 I got, oh, I got one. Uh, we're going to take up three more comments. Uh, we're going to take these two young ladies and then the officer in the back. We'll start with. Uh, this young woman with the hat first, please. Oh, okay. Go ahead, ma'am. Jacqueline Hilson again. You say raised bike lane. Mm -hmm. Does this thing go up and down and what like where? Like or is it mm -hmm. going to go straight through bike? Like you can't cross trees. Like you can't get across trees. So the, uh, if you see right up where this arrow is coming down, there's a few little white dots. That represents the, a ramp that will go down at each intersection. So 
you'll be riding, you'll be at um, a curb height, and then you, as you approach the intersection, there'll be a ramp down, and then at, at the intersection, you would ride along at the same level as everything else at the intersection, and then at the far side, you would ramp back up. Okay. Yes, ma'am, please. So, so the south conduit, you know how it's, it's the conduit exit onto Atlantic going to Logan? And so we're heading towards the venue. You know how they merge? Mm -hmm. They merge onto Atlantic. So are they putting a light there in order to stop traffic? So when you have cyclists ending at Logan or any kind of traffic coming on Atlantic towards Logan, they're going to have a full stop. So you, there's... I don't know, it controls that, that, that yielding intersection? So you're talking about the, the vehicles that are merging with the, yeah, with so on from conduit and the vehicles on the Atlantic? The north yeah, yeah, north, north, north conduit Atlantic into mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, do you want to? Yeah. So we will not be adding a stop control or a signalized control there because of the volume of traffic there. Yes. So how well, that's why. Mm -hmm. so, so it's the bicycle path, the bicycle lane is ending at Logan, but there's, so not only traffic is sort of trying to yield to each other, but also mm -hmm. bicycles. So the bicyclists actually, so I was going to answer this before. So actually, the the bicyclists will do the sort of the, the transition to the curb um, that we were talking about at Rockaway. They'll be doing that at Euclid. So they'll already be at the curb when they're approaching uh, that that merge. Mm -hmm. All right. So the last comment this evening from the officer in the back. Uh, just, uh, yeah, Euclid. That's good. Yeah, that was. That was good. That was. Yeah, that was my. All right, so we would like to thank Lily, Olivia, and Nathan from the Department of Transportation. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. You will, be, you will be hearing from us, and we hope to be hearing from you with the information that you're supposed to get back to us on. Um, Nathan, if you wouldn't mind staying uh, a little bit uh, for some old business. Sure. Uh, Ms. Brayboy. Yes, okay. Nathan, we were um, discussing it. Hold on a second. Uh, and if you would, if you are not joining us for the remainder of the meeting, I would ask that you excuse yourselves quietly, please. Thanks so much. The meeting is still going on. Ms. Brayboy. The study at Loring and um, Fountain and the and that intersection crossing over into the project area, well, remember we asked about doing this, another study and um, the, we are, um, the uh, business owner could not come into the block that blocks his business from coming about. And then, um, do you, you review the request and what? Yeah, so you have a number of requests. There was a number you wanted us to get. Um, there was, some of that new, the, the new way the traffic patterns were, there were some issues with cars that were queuing into the car wash around the block, and that was causing like, the traffic jam. So if you requested signage to clear that curb over there, so like a no standing sign. Um, 